This is video three of unit one. In this video, we'll talk about isotopic abundance. Now, what you have here is a flask of the element chlorine. And the question is, how many different chlorine atoms are in there? Now, all of the atoms in here are chlorine, but remember that chlorine can come in the form of different isotopes. For example, in the case of chlorine, there's chlorine 35, and there's also chlorine 37. Both of these, uh, of these isotopes are present in the bottle, and we will talk about this idea in this lesson. So to remind you, uh, we talked about atomic number last time, which is the number of protons, and it's listed on the periodic table as the whole number above the element. Uh, today we're going to talk about the atomic mass, which is another number that you see on the periodic table, and that's usually below the element. And this 35.453 actually comes from the isotopes of chlorine. Again, there are two isotopes of chlorine, 35 and 37. And these two put together somehow determine the atomic mass of uh, chlorine. And this is what we're going to talk about. The central idea is how do we come up with this atomic mass number. Uh, remember, atomic mass will have units of AMU, atomic mass units. And uh, that's what we're going to be talking about. So the atomic mass is the average, but it's a special type of average. It's called the weighted average of all the different isotopes of that element. Uh, again, to uh, show you this, if you take a look at sulfur on the periodic table, sulfur element number 16 on the periodic table has a mass of 32.07. If you take a look, that 32.07 is the weighted average, the weighted average of all the sulfur out there. And it turns out there are four isotopes of sulfur for stable isotopes. There are some radioactive isotopes that aren't stable, and they usually don't make it into this number. And uh, those four put together, the masses of the four put together, give you 3207. Now, if you take a look as a clue, the isotope right here, which is uh, sulfur 32, has a mass of about 32. It's almost 32, and that is roughly what the mass of sulfur is on the periodic table, which tells us that this isotope has the biggest effect on the overall mass. The heaviest isotope here, uh, weighs about 36, has a really, really small effect, and this percentage will be the effect that it has, as you'll see. So how do we determine the atomic mass? Let's consider another element, lithium, and here we're going to show you the details of how the atomic mass is calculated. There are two major isotopes of lithium. Uh, the first one has a mass of 6.07 AMU, the second one 7.01 AMU, and these are lithium 6 and lithium 7. So lithium 6 has a mass of 6.01. That's because its mass number is 6. Lithium 7 has a mass of 7.01 AMU. Now the percent abundance of the first one is 7.59. This essentially is the percent. Here it says abundance is what percent of all the element out there is of that isotope. So about 7.6% of all the lithium out there is lithium 6. And then most of the lithium out there, about 92.4%, is lithium-7. So most of the lithium out there that you have is actually of the lithium-7 variety. That's what this slide is pointing out. Now, if you take a look at the periodic table at lithium, the average atomic mass of lithium is 694 AMU. That's what's right below the uh, element on the periodic table, 6.941. So the question is, how did we get this number? From all the data, how did we get this number? And the answer to that is summarized in this uh, little table. What we do is we're going to average the two masses, the lithium-6 mass and the lithium-7 mass. We're going to average them. Now, if we just average them directly, we simply add 6 and 7 divided by 2, we should get roughly 6.5. But however, so 6.5 would be the average that you would get. Uh, however, the average mass of lithium is not 6.5. If you take a look, it's six, more like 6.9. So this is not a straight average. This is not how we're going to do it. The weighted average considers the weight of the percent abundance. And the idea here, it says this is how your grade is calculated, or, or in a similar, uh, similar way, your grade is averaged. So for this class, for example, 30% of your grade is based on homework, and then 70% of your grade is based on tests. So if you do poorly on the tests, 
and really well in the homework, you'll still get a lower grade in the class because the tests weigh more toward the end grade than the homework do. Same thing here. This isotope here weighs much more to the overall mass than the lithium-6. So uh, the real mass is going to be somewhere closer to 6.9. That's because uh, this lithium-7 actually is more abundant. So here is the equation to calculate the atomic uh, mass. And what you do is you take the percent abundance divided by 100 of the first element times the mass of the isotope, rather of the first isotope, times the mass. You do the same thing to the second one. You take the percent abundance over 100 times the mass of the isotope, and then you keep going for however many isotopes there are. The dividing by 100 essentially is undoing the percent. So you know instead of 58%, you'll end up with 0.58. And that 0.58 then is multiplied by the mass, and that essentially calculates 58% of the total mass is going to be due to that isotope. And that's how it's done. So here's the formula, and we're going to actually apply it. So here it says calculate the atomic mass of lithium from the data above. Now lithium, if you remember, has a mass of 6.01, and that was at a percentage, I believe, of, uh, let's take a quick look. 7.59%, so this is AMU, and the second isotope, 701, was at 92.4%. So this is our data. So we simply have to multiply the first isotope's mass by its percent abundance over 100, do the same thing to the second one, so simple as that. So we take percent, we'll, let's do the formula exactly, we get 7.59% over 100, and this multiplies by the mass of the isotope, which is 6.01. You do the same thing for the second one, you got 92.4% over 100 times the second isotope, which is 7.01. You keep doing that, and then you add them up. So <clears throat> let's uh, calculate this one. In your calculator, essentially 7.59 divided by 100 is 0 0.0759. Multiply that by 6.01, you get 0.45616. So let's use a few more decimal places just in case. 45616. Do the same thing for the bottom 0.924 times 7.01, and you get 6.477, roughly. And then 24 if you want more numbers. And then we get to add these up. When we add these up, we get 10, carry the 1, that gives us a 4. We get 13, one more, 6 plus 7, another 13. This is a 9, and that remains a 6. Now, in the end, uh, because we have three significant figures, based on three sig figs, since we're multiplied, you know, we're actually going to take uh, just the first two, and we're going to cut it off right here. So significant, following significant figure rules, we're going to cut it off right here. And our final mass is 6.93 AMU. And that, if you take a look at lithium's mass, actually matches lithium really well. So this is how you would calculate the atomic mass using percent abundance data and the uh, isotope mass data. Go ahead and try it on your own. Uh, do this calculation real quick. Pause the video. Shouldn't take too, uh, too long. Shouldn't be too bad. Hopefully. And then take a look at magnesium in the back table. Find magnesium, hopefully you'll find that uh, the mass of magnesium is 2431. Go ahead and look, look that up to make sure uh, you get that answer once you do this problem. Now here is a problem, example six. Let's do this one together. This one is the same thing, but backwards. So let me show you how to do a problem like this backwards. So here we have the isotopes themselves, and we have the masses, and we have the percent abundance, and then we're asking for one of the percent abundances. Now for this, we have to recall, if you take a chlorine in the periodic table, element number 17, it has 35.45 as its atomic mass. So we're going to have to use the total mass. So essentially, from our previous formula, remember we did percent over 100 times mass of isotope 1 plus percent over 100 times mass of isotope 2. Kept going, and that equaled the whole thing. So in our case, that will equal 35.45. So I wrote out the formula essentially in a linear fashion. We stacked them up, and here it's in a linear fashion. So 
let's just plug stuff into this formula and see what we get. So essentially, we're not our unknown percent is going to be this guy here, our second isotope. We don't know the percent of. So a 75, 77 over 100 multiplied by 34, 97 plus. We don't know what the second one is, so we'll do uh, x over a 100. If we don't know it, why don't we put x? That's the one we're going to be solving for. Times the, the uh, mass, which is 3697. And then the whole thing equals 35.45. So what we have to do now is go ahead and compute and see what we get. So if we do 75.77 times 3497, we got 0 0.7577 times 34.97. This gives us 26.497. 26.497. Now, we're going to have plus something x. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move uh, essentially the x. I'm going to move this down here, uh, divide by 100. And uh, you get yourself x times point. Three six nine seven. Uh, if you distribute that, uh, that's the answer you get. If this is confusing, uh, essentially, what you're doing is saying that uh, a number, a fraction times another fraction, you can simply put that down here, since you're uh, multiplying the fractions. And this is equal to thirty-five point four five. Now, what we'll have to do then is uh, move the twenty-six four nine seven to the other side. So I'm going to subtract this since it's being added. So I get myself x times 0.3697 equals, and then I'll subtract 3545 minus 26497. We should get ourselves an answer of 8.953. And now to solve for x, oops, <clears throat> this is essentially like 0.3697x would divide. So you divide by that number down here, and then your x equals, let's divide that by 0.3697, x equals 24.2%. So you just found the percent abundance of the second one. A little bit of algebra, if that was a bit confusing, if I want a little quick, uh, stop and try to work it out on your own. Now you may be saying, wait a minute, uh, I probably could have gotten that much more easily by simply subtracting from 100, since 100 minus 76 roughly is about 24. And uh, you're correct. Um, you could have done it this way. I just kind of showed you that you can go backwards. And it, uh, you'll have a problem where you actually, have, if you were to solve for this one, that you you had to have, have done it this way. Hopefully that makes sense. OK, so we'll do a few of these problems as well. Uh, to finish up, I'm going to show you a device uh, you may be asking yourself, well, how uh, these atoms are really tiny. So how, if you have a sample of chlorine, for example, how do scientists know how many of each isotope there are? There's the heavier isotopes, the 37 variety, and then the lighter isotopes, the 35 variety. How do we know how many of each there are? Well, uh, a famous way of doing it is using what's called a spectrometer. Uh, essentially, it's a big machine where you put your chlorine into this big machine, and it spits out a graph. In this case, uh, the graph is actually of lithium that we just looked at. And it actually spits out a graph and divides the two isotopes into two peaks, it gives you two peaks. Lithium-7 has a really high uh, mark on the graph, which means there's more lithium-7 out there. Lithium-6 has a lower graph. Good. So this machine is a device that separates atoms according to their mass. And then this way, when we read out, we actually produce one of these graphs. We're able to see what kind of isotope and how many isotopes you have in uh, the reading. And I'll talk about what these uh, represent, the MZ and then the intensity here in a little bit. So here's how the device works. Uh, a, gas a, sam a gaseous sample is ionized, which means ionized means they actually remove electrons from it. So chlorine, for example, would become chlorine plus. The reason they do this is because they're going to put a magnet which then will be able to attract the positive charged ionized particles. So ionization takes place. They usually bombard it with high energy to ionize it. Then they accelerate them to make sure the particles fly real quick. And then the magnet will uh, deflect them. Here it says the degree of magnet deflection depends on the mass of the particle. So if you have a really heavy particle, 
because it's heavier, it's not going to be deflected by the magnet as much. A lighter particles will be deflected by the magnet. And then you have a, um, a recorder down here. You amplify the uh, screen and you record it, essentially. And the ones that got deflected a lot, for example, will be on this side. The ones that didn't get deflected a lot will be on this side. And so you'll get peaks corresponding to the masses. It's a really fun way uh, or really a smart way of doing it. These uh, spectrometers were actually invented some time ago. And we still use them uh, for looking inside of a sample to see how many different uh, masses we have. So here is a spectrum that's produced from it. Here's the chlorine. Uh, I'm back to the chlorine spectrum. Now the mass over charge, this right here essentially gives you the mass of the two isotopes. Usually it's mass over charge, but the charge is usually plus one. If the charge is plus one, uh, then the mass over charge is going to be just over one. And notice you have a 35 mass and a 37 mass corresponding to chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. And notice their charge is a plus one. As long as the charge is a plus one, their masses are going to match up their charges. So if their charge were a plus two, you'd have to actually divide the masses in two. You'll get lighter um, isotopes. Uh, and then the intensity is essentially what percentage of the sample uh, came in as the 35 variety versus the 37. And again, you see there's much more of the 35, roughly 80 or roughly 75% of it came up as 35. And then the rest of it is probably about 25% of it came up as uh, 37. And then from this, you would take these numbers. These are the masses, roughly 35. These are the percent abundances. And you plug it into our formula, and you get the average atomic mass. So that there it is. Uh, but uh, we're going to finish up with this example. This one actually uh, just allows you to analyze the spectrum a little bit. It says below is the mass spectrum of the element molybdenum, element number 42 on the periodic table. And how many isotopes does the molybdenum have? And which is the most abundant isotope? So molybdenum was uh, placed into a spectrometer. And uh, this is the graph that got produced. And so what we see is molybdenum has uh, a bunch of different isotopes uh, ranging from a mass of about, of about 92 to about 102. Some elements uh, have five or more different isotopes, which is possible. And so how many isotopes? Well, however many peaks we have. Since we see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven peaks, we actually have seven isotopes, which is a lot. Uh, but some elements will even have more than seven. Some of the lower elements, the lower you are, as a rule, the more isotopes you have on the periodic table, uh, which is the most abundant isotope. Now, the relative abundance is on the y-axis. So obviously, this guy having the highest peak will be the most abundant. And that looks roughly like it's 99 to me. So which is the most abundant isotope? Well, molybdenum, 99. MO, 99. Remember, you could also write this as molybdenum, 99, like so. You can write it out, molybdenum, 99. So hopefully this makes sense. Uh, we're actually going to use a few of these graphs and be able to read it. And I will see you in class. This concludes lesson three.